Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss certain business expenses that could apply differently for self-employed and employee, which is they require a little bit of explanation. If you are self-employed, you prepare a Schedule C. So you prepare a Schedule C, you would list your income and you would list your expenses and you'll either net have a net income or a net loss. Then eventually the net income or the net loss will go to your form 1040, whether it's net income or a net loss. And this is adjusted gross income. It's listed above adjusted gross income. So any expenses you take are for adjusted gross income. However, if you are an employee and you qualify for certain deduction, it's gonna go on schedule A. So you add up all your deductions, which is some of them will be office in the home and they are deducted below AGI, which is from AGI. So it's very important to understand this concept. I repeat, I repeat this concept every time because it's worth remembering. Let's go ahead and get started to see how office in the home works and what are the requirements. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Deductibility here is very restrictive because the possibility of abuse. Remember, if you're working from home, what's personal and what's business gets blended, so we, the, the IRS have specific rules. The office must be used primarily, it means exclusive only for business purposes, and it must be used on a regular, consistent basis. It should be considered your main place of business and it should be utilized by client, patient, and customer. So when someone comes, you know, a customer, a patient, a client, you meet them in that office on a regular basis. So what's a, what's, what's a, main, what's a main place of business? What does that mean? What constitutes a main place of business? Well, if the tax, if you carry out administrative, you do all the paperwork, management work, and, and we have to be careful, and this is very important for employees, and it's used not for your convenience, for the convenience of your employer. So your employer is asking you to work from home, okay? So it's not optional. So if you, you do this for your own convenience, if you're an employee, remember, if this is an employee, then it doesn't qualify. So you are working from home because your employer asks you to do so. It's for their convenience, not for your convenience. So you have to do administrative management work and it has to be for the convenience of your employer. Now, if you are an employee, if you are self-employed, that's a different story. That's as long as you meet those criteria, then the office in the home is deductible. Now, bear in mind, if you're an employee, those deductions will be suspended from 2018 to 2025. How you determine how much to deduct, you can either one of two methods, either the regular method, which is called the actual expense method, or the simplified method or the safe harbor method. Let's start by looking at the regular method. Okay, under the regular method, you have various expenses. You're gonna you're gonna categorize them as direct expenses or indirect expenses. What does that mean? Direct expenses means they are related specifically to that office space. Indirect it means they could benefit the business and the personal. We're gonna see what they are. Direct expenses only the part of the home that's designated for the office. So any expense you incur there, for example, if you paint the wall, let's assume this is the office, this is specifically for the benefit of this office. If, if you put a carpet there for that office, if you change the carpet, it's specific for that office. Those are deducted in full. Now, there are certain expenses that you cannot break them between personal and business. For example, utilities taxes, insurance, you pay insurance for the whole home. You don't buy insurance specifically for the office. Same thing with taxes. When you pay the taxes, you pay the taxes for the whole house. Same thing with utilities, unless you have separate utilities, which is not likely. You would allocate between business and personal based on the allocation base. Home office expense, if you are self-employed, means you have a trade, then those expenses are deductible for AGI. They're basically part of your 
part of your schedule C. So that's that's fine. So allowable home office expenses cannot create a loss. What does that mean? If you're self-employed and you are computing your net income, and at the end of the day, the home office expense cannot create a net loss for you. And you can break even, okay? Same concept as hobby or rental of vacation homes, where if you have ex a an excess expenses of those home office expenses, and you no longer have income to offset them, then that's it, you can no longer take them. Some of them can be carried forward, like depreciation. Okay, and what happened is, any amount that's not used, for example, uh, interest on the home, taxes, they can be used somewhere else, like on Schedule A, assuming you itemize. Okay, amount allowed as itemized deductions are deducted first, must be deducted first. So when you perform your computation, the first thing you do is you deduct uh, after cost of goods sold, mortgage interest and real estate because those are deductible anyway. Let's take a look at this example. Adam is CPA working as a tax manager in a CPA regional firm. He runs a tutoring business on the side. He dedicates two rooms in his basement for the sole purpose of a CPA tutoring business. These two rooms occupy 200 and square feet equivalent to 10% of his residence, which totaled 2,500 square feet. The tutoring business generates a gross income of 6,000 for this particular year, with expenses excluding home office expenses of 4,000, amounting to 4,000. So this is basically software, advertising, supplies for the office, so on and so forth. And Adam had the following home expenses, interest on the mortgage for the whole home, taxes on the property for the whole property, homeowner's insurance, and maker's depreciation of 400. How do we compute the home office expense. Well, first thing we do is we'll take the 6,000 of income minus basically the cost of the business, 4,000 equal to 2,000. Then we're gonna deduct the interest and the taxes first. And this is gonna be 10% of those. 9,000 plus 5,000 equal to 14,000 times 10%. That's gonna be 1,400. We're gonna take the 2,000 minus 1,400. That's gonna give us $600 left in income. Then we're going to take 10% of the homeowner's insurance, which is 600 minus 250, will give us $350. Now we have depreciation. Remember, we cannot incur a loss from the home office expense. Therefore, of the 400, we're going to be using 350, and what's left, $50, will be carried the excess depreciation for future years. Let's look at the simplified method. Well, it's simplified method. Well, you are allowed under the simplified method, you don't have to keep track of things, $5 per square foot, and you are limited to 300 square foot. So you are limited to 1500 deduction. No deduction is allowed for depreciation or actual expenses. They're just saying you can take $5 per square feet up to 300, okay? Now this is good because what you can do, you can free up interest and taxes to take on Schedule A and there is no carryover of any unused depreciation. Let's look at this example, the same example as Adam, but using the simplified method. Again, we'll start 6,000 of income minus 4,000 of supplies, advertising, and software cost, 2,000. What's left is he, he occupied 250 feet times five, which is 1,250. 2,000 minus 1,250, he would have a net income of 750. Now. Now, bear in mind that uh, that he did not use his home mortgage and taxes, which he can use fully now on Schedule A. Usually, usually, the simplified method is, is less. Usually, the simplified method is less. Now, which method to use? Well, you have to know the rules for both, because now with the simplified method, it presents an annual decision. The, 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 the taxpayer has to either take the s simplified method or the actual. When considering the two methods, first you have to understand regular and exclusive apply to both. So that doesn't change between the two. Now, bear in mind, the simplified method require fewer calculation and less record keeping. Why? Because you just need to know how many square footage you are occupying. That's all what you have to know. By eliminating depreciation, because you don't take depreciation, you avoid the 25% real estate tax uh, for depreciation recapture. What does that mean? When you take depreciation on the house and you sell the house later, you are required to do what? To recapture this depreciation. Well, if you don't take the depreciation, you don't have to recapture it. 
And as I mentioned, the simplified method will free up your interest and mortgage to be deductible on Schedule A, assuming you are itemizing, assuming you are itemizing. In most cases, the regular method will have a smaller amount because you could, the maximum is 1,500. And it does not allow for any unused deductions specifically for mortgage. And once the taxpayer, ha taxpayer has made a choice, it cannot be changed. In other words, you cannot amend your return and change it from one method to the other. That's fine. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you understand this concept better. Whether you are a CPA candidate, accounting student, or an enrolled agent, Farhat Lectures can help. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.